Well, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Come on, come on, make some noise. Come on, celebrate our young people today. Yes, what an amazing honor it is to be able to be here. Uh, Oak, Park, Oak Park, I'm 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 not new to this, I'm true to this. I grew up off nine and Kulik, so this is this is nothing but home to me. And uh such an honor to be able to be here to some of your amazing visionaries such as Miss Walker, Miss Allen, and, and Mr. Alexander, and Mr. Evans. I know he's somewhere floating around here. Give it up for them. Come on, give it up for them. Give it up for them. Yes. I, I could turn over the mic to the, the one and only King of Comedy who's here, the one and only Michael Collier. Come on, give it up, give it up. Brother G up from the feet up. Smooth, I don't know what. And so it's so great to see all of you all amazing people here because we, we understand that while we're here, we gotta support our children, don't we? We, 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 gotta, we gotta save these babies, don't we? We gotta make sure they got a great future. Aren't we, aren't we, aren't we right about it? Show of hands, how many of us believe that our children can be successful? Come on, show of hands. Come on, raise your hands as high as you see your child going. How, how many of us, how many of us want our children to be bigger, better, and brighter than we are? Come on, they're gonna be bigger and better and brighter than you. And if we believe that, especially if we believe our children can be successful, here's what we have to understand. They say by the time our young people hit the age of 17, they've already played 10,000 hours worth of, worth of video games. But the question is, who has taught them how to create a video game? You know, our young people are on TikTok, but, but who's actually showing them how to manage the time on the clock? Right? And actually recognize that they got to invest in themselves. When we think about intentional time, especially when we talk about National African American Parent Involvement Day, the key word is involvement. And in order to be involved, you got to be intentional. They say by the time our young people hit the, they say the average parent only spends about, the mother spends about 17 minutes worth of intentional time with her child on a daily basis in the span of 24 hours. I know we busy. Managing multiple jobs, you, you're trying to get the money, you're trying to secure the bag, but we can't forget to secure our children too. We can't forget to secure their, their future. The, the, the average time that a father spends in his child's life, according to researchers, of intentional time is only seven minutes a day. Do I got some intentional parents in here today? Come on, come on, do I got some intentional parents? You, you know, to be intentional means I gotta, I gotta make sure that it's purpose driven. To be intentional means I gotta make sure that I'm deliberate with this. Intentional time is like, hey, you know, we're we not just talking to each other because we're at, with our phones in our hand. Intentional time is I'm actually taking the time to sit down with my child and to invest in my child when we're having dinner together. I don't know if you sit them over there into the, their, their room to just play video games and just to watch TV. No, we're gonna have conversation, we're gonna have communication. Y'all remember them old school values? Come on. And here's the thing. What we do is, a lot of times we just give gifts to our children. You give them video games. You give them bumps with the white sticks. Come on, somebody talk to them. We, we give them shoes and we give them clothes. But here's the thing. Our children spell love, T-I-M-E. Somebody say time. time. Right? The, the time is an investment in my child. Time is an investment in our children. Intentional time. Intentional time looks like this. I want you to repeat some affirmations. Young, young Jamal, I want you to repeat, repeat some affirmations, young Keisha. Come on, say, say that I am an I am a conqueror. I am successful. I am brilliant. I am great. I am smart. I am intelligent. Right? Because a lot of times what our young people rehearse is failure. Don't allow your children to tell you that they can't do math and science when they come from ancestors, when they come from a people who align the pyramids with the stars. Tell me you can't do no math and science. You stand on the shoulders of giants. You stand on the shoulders of a Mega Evers, of a Rosa Parks, of a Fannie Lou Hamer, of a, of a Martin Luther King Jr., of a Malcolm X, of a Sojourner Truth. They got to know the truth about who it is that they are. We got to let them know that your history don't begin with no slavery. Your history begins from the fact that you understand that you come from kings and queens. King means kingly, intelligent, noble gentleman. Queen means quintessentially unique and powering everyone naturally. And here's the thing, if our parents are only spending, the average mother is only spending 17 minutes of intentional time with their child, 
The father's only spending seven minutes of intentional time with his child. Who's spending the most time with our children? Is it Jeezy, Weezy, Yeezy, and Jay-Z? Is it Nicki Minaj? Is it Cardi B? Come on, somebody talk to me. Is it Suki Young? Uh-huh. Is it Sada Baby? Is it T Grizzly? Come on, y'all pulled up to the, to the scene today with listening to them artists. Come on now. If we're not spending intentional time, the phone is. The video games are. Social media is. And as a result, now social media becomes the parent. Now our young people are trying to fit into a stereotypical view of who they are and they don't really know who it is that they really are on the inside. You never know who you are until you know who you are. And that's why literacy is so important. If our children are going to lead, they got to read. We as the leaders. We got to understand that whole aspect, especially as I work with many young boys. I have a program called Boys to Books, Empowering Young Men Through Literacy, Leadership, and Life Skills Enrichment. I'm looking forward to bringing it to, in the district here with Mr. Alexander and Ms. Walker and Mr. Evans because we understand that, listen, they're building prisons based on second and third grade reading scores. According to Dr. Juwanza Kajufu, they have a book, a book called The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. They want to lock up your brothers. They want to lock up our sisters. But we got to be the ones who's going to unlock their dreams. We got to let our young people know, no, you ain't going to prison. You're going to Princeton. You're not going to jail. You're going to Cornell and Yale. You're not going to do four years in a prison house. You're going to do four years at Spelman and Morehouse. Somebody talk to me today. You're not going to do four years at a correctional facility. You're going to do four years at a college or a university. And even if you don't go to college, you can pick up a trade. You can pick up a skills trade. Why? Because an electrician is just as important as an educator. A plumber is just as important as a professor. Come on now. We got to expose our young people. That's why... Engagement is so needed and so necessary in the lives of our children. We gotta engage with them. Scripture says, train up a child in the way that they should go and when they're older, they won't depart from it. We gotta look at what it is that they're so gifted at at a young age and train them up in that. They're gifted with the poetry. They're gifted with the words. They're with, gifted with encouragement. They're gifted with dance. They're gifted with putting math and music together. Why don't we train? Why don't we nurture that? We gotta engage them in that. We gotta encourage them as well. We gotta engage, we gotta have encouragement. We gotta speak life into the lives of our children. If our children hear us saying that we are failing, that we can't do it, we gotta realize this. They gonna say the same thing to themselves. Children not just doing what we say, they doing what we do. We gotta encourage them so that they begin to encourage themselves because your words create your world. What you speak into the atmosphere will appear. Your future and your funeral is on the tip of your tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we gotta make sure that they speak life into their own life. We gotta have expectations of them. You know, the greatest indicator for children's success and student success is the belief that they can succeed. Once again, by a show of hands, how many of us believe that our children can succeed and will be successful? Right, so we gotta speak life over their life. We gotta tell them, no, oh, you're gonna be successful, you got this. You may be struggling in this area, but guess what, we gonna, we gonna find some strength, we gonna find some wraparound services. You got teachers, you got, you got mentors, you got me. Why? Because we say it, it takes a village to raise a child. And we can see today the village is oftentimes broken. The village has got crime. The village has got negativity. The village is the fact that we don't realize that we are brothers keeper. We are our sisters protector. But here's the thing. If our children are not embraced by the village, they will burn it down to feel its warmth. Don't we see it? these villages being burned down today? To where in many cases the schools reject the kids, the, the church rejects the kid, kids, the, the, the community rejects the kids. And guess what? If the streets accept the kids, guess where our kids are headed? Schools closed, prisons open. Right? So we got to have that encouragement. We got to have that engagement. We got to have expectations. We also have to create an environment for where our children can grow, for where our children can be successful. We gotta recognize and listen, like, like Tupac said, they gotta be a rose that grows through the concrete. What's, what's the environment that you got at the home? Is the environment chaos? Is the environment negativity? Is the environment all types of fussing and cussing and arguing and our children are internalizing that? Right, because this is what we said. What goes on in this house? Come on, say it loud and proud. What goes on in this house? That's a lie. 
Because, because what goes on in this house seeps into the classroom. What goes on in this house bleeds into the school. What goes on in this house bleeds into the community, into the church, into the environment. And as a result, we take all of that negativity, that trauma, the triggers. We are in adulthood where we have experience in childhood is what Dr. Sidney Freud said. Dr. Joy DeGroy, the writer of the book, Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome, said that we carry in our DNA, us as African Americans, us as black brothers and sisters, we carry in our DNA the trauma and the, and the, the trials and the triggers of the negativity of what it is that we receive from our ancestors. So we push that down from generation to generation to generation. Somebody told you you ain't nothing, so now you're telling your children you ain't gonna be nothing. Somebody told you, oh, you, you just like your daddy, and you telling your child you just like your daddy. You ain't gonna be nothing. And now they internalizing that. We gotta do the healing and we gotta give that love that in many cases that we void of, the void of that we gotta find so that we pass that love on to our children. Right? Because here it is. We are the leaders that we've been looking for. And if we believe that, we'll say it like Frederick Douglass who said, if we build strong children, we won't have to repair broken adults. If we build strong boys and girls, we won't have to repair broken men and women. We got to get to this place to where we say, listen, I got a heart not just for my child. I got a heart for the other children that I'm seeing around here. Because we got to save our babies. I'm tired of going to more funerals than I am graduations. I'm tired of having to bury my mentees. I'm tired of seeing our young people throw their life away simply because they didn't have no course correction. Because many of our young people are void of a mentor. Because they didn't receive no love in the home. And now because they didn't receive no love in the home, hurting people hurt people, but heal people heal people. Right? We ain't waiting on no government to bail us out. Because they don't care about us, no way. We got to say like they do, like we say in communities where I'm living at, where I'm coming from, Warren and Con on the east side, that we all we got. And that love's got to flow from Seven Mile and Schaefer. That love's got to flow all the way to Dexter and Davidson. That love's got to flow over there to Mac and Beware. Come on, somebody talk to me. That love's got to flow in our community. That love's got to flow from our heart. And recognize, listen, you made in the image of God just like I am. And because you made in the image of God just like I am, I ain't going to hate on you when I should be learning from you. No, you, you, you're you not somebody that I'm going to compete with. I'm going to collaborate with you because I got there's greatness that's on the inside of you. We got to let our young people know each and every single day that there's greatness that flows in their DNA. Royalty and loyalty flows in your DNA. And as a result of it, listen, you're going to do better than I am. Intentional time is reading to our children. The tragedy is that our young people, in many cases, they're growing up in communities to where, in many cases, you think about Birmingham and you think about Berkeley per pupil expenditure. They get more money, they get more books, they get more resources, and we don't get the same amount of opportunities. Right? And in many cases, they'll be glad to put us in prison, $35,000 per head for beds for your child. Right? Because they recognize the, the, the value of black lives, but it's only for slavery with a new name. We got to unlock their dreams, and one of those portals is through literacy. White kids have 4,000 hours worth of pre-literacy exposure before they even hit kindergarten. Black children only have 400 hours. We got to read to our children, not just read to our children. We got to ask them questions. What did you learn from this? How does this book speak to you? What is the value that you see in your life? Because listen, so many times we give up on our young people, and I was one of those people that people gave up on. Where are my single mothers? Where are my single fathers in here? Listen, don't give up on your children. I'm a product of a single mother who didn't give up on me. We had the movie The Color Purple on the screen in here. I tell you, just like Sophia, all my life, I had to fight. Do I got some fighters in here? You fought through the storm, you fought through the rain, you fought through the trials and the pain. People gave up on me, and I almost gave up on me. I was 15 years old, being raised by a single mother. Parents are divorced, and I'm having chest pains in school, and I was kind of lackadaisical and sleeping in class. I pretty much love school. My favorite two classes in school were gym and lunch. I love to chase the girls in the gym, sit down and eat with them at lunch. And having these chest pains, and oftentimes as black boys becoming men, what they say, don't cry. Crying is for girls. Vulnerability and masculinity cannot coexist in the same space. Be a tough guy. 
don't be soft. You fall off a bike at four. No, 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 don't cry. I'm four. I'm not 44. Let me know what's I. Right. And coming out of what I was experiencing, I'm over my friend's house watching a football game, can't breathe by halftime. His mother takes me to the hospital. My mother meets me there. I'm having these chest pains. I didn't want to tell nobody nothing because pain is weakness leaving the body. They do a CT scan of the chest and they take me to the, to the, the doctor, an the x-ray. And they see they need to take me to surgery immediately. They see my cells in my body as they cut me open and growing so fast they can see them growing with the naked eye. Around my heart, my trachea, my esophagus, my voice box, the place I'm speaking to you out of right now. They remove a tumor that was in my body and the doctor says, Eddie, we have a diagnosis for you. I'm playing basketball, I'm running cross country. I said, let me get back to being a kid. He said, hold up right quick. You have what we call NHL. Now, Brother Mike, I was getting ready to run around that hospital because for me, NHL stood for National Hockey League. I said, I'm getting ready to be youngest owner of the Red Wings. I don't like hockey because I'm tired of seeing white folks hit something black. He says, no, you have uh, what we call non-Hoskins lymphoma. I'm like, my first language is bionics. I'm still trying to learn English. What do you mean? He says, you have not one, not two, not three, but four. I'm filling my pockets to find four dollars. The doctor says, you have stage four cancer. I'm like, I'm just starting my life. How am I fighting for my life? Went through chemotherapy, radiation, lost all my hair, my self-confidence, my self-esteem. My own father never visited me one day in the hospital. People I thought were praying for me were literally praying on me. Sitting on the sideline expecting my demise. But if it wasn't for a praying mama, I wouldn't be here today. What that song say? My mama prayed for me, had me on the mind took the time to pray for me. And I had to internalize that I could overcome those obstacles because the first three letters in cancer spells what, y'all? Can. Come on, say it loud. Can. You can overcome, you can survive. When you think about us as African-American people, the last four letters in African and I can. The last four letters in African spells I can. The last four letters in American spells I can. Yes. Yes. People don't tell you what you can't do, but if you believe you can or you can't, you right. You can overcome, you can survive. I can do all things in Christ that strengthens me. And so I'm blessed to be able to find the can of cancer and overcome in 2024 marks 24 years of me being cancer free. By the grace of God. And I use my life as a story, as a testament, as a servant leader to empower our young people. Let them know, yo, bro, your father may not have been in your life. Yeah, I know what that's like. You may have faced certain obstacles. I know what that's like. But a knockdown is not a knockout unless you stay down. Yes. You got to get back up again. You got to overcome. And it's going to take us as a village. Yes. It's going to take every mother. It's going to take every father. It's going to take you, whether you feel like you're educated or not, whether you feel like you're qualified or not. God don't call qualified people. He qualifies those that he calls. Yes. And you call to change your community, you call to change this school, you call to change your environment, you call to be a change agent every single where you go. And also empower our young people to be a greater change agent as well. And let them know that you didn't die, you multiplied. Yeah. As long as you got a pulse, you got a purpose. This is our time to go higher. This is our time to shine brighter. This is our time to do it bigger and better than ever before. Because we all we got. God bless y'all.